Hi, I'm Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being. Today we hear a survivor talk about sexual withholding and the narcissist. When I spoke to this person, I realized that that can feel pretty isolating and pretty difficult to talk about in, or in, an, in an individual situation. So I asked a community of survivors if they wouldn't mind sharing some of their own experiences or if they had any questions around the same topic. So after we hear from her, I'll go ahead and read to you some of the things that the survivors said. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and let's go. I know that um, part of narcissistic abuse can be um, a sexual component. And um, I have a situation I hope is unique. Um, it is a situation whereby uh, I married my husband approximately 10 years ago. Um, I didn't understand anything about narcissistic abuse. I didn't know anything about what was going on. I knew that something was unusual and something was off. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, you know, I've, I've learned some things. And one in particular that I guess I have a question about um, is the, by virtue of the fact that um, religiously, I'm a religious person and, you know, I, I kept myself I saved myself for marriage. Um, after the marriage, uh, my husband refused to consummate the marriage, and uh, he stated a few things. And again, I blamed myself at the time. He said, I didn't know my own body. Um, I didn't understand sexuality. Um, I didn't, I wasn't as energetic as he was. I need too much sleep. I'm too boring, you know, a myriad of excuses. Um, Ten years later, I'm still working to get away from him, but at this time, um, I still have a ten-year unconsummated marriage. And I just, yeah, I just, um, you know, and it's easy for people to say, get out, run. But um, I know nothing's going to change with him. Um, he won't even talk about it. And so... I, I'm not sure as much I have a question. Have you encountered this? Um, how have people dealt with situations like this? And again, I hope I'm a fairly isolated case. Um, and in addition to that, uh, I caught him um, sexting other women. I have no idea. I would guess that he's probably cheated as well. Um, and so it was, to answer your question within me, um, it's created some self-doubt, um, but it's also created some anger that the doubts, the self-doubt, the self-loathing that I went through. I mean, now now I know it's not me, but at the time, you know, I just kept thinking, what is wrong with me? People can make comments like, um, <laughs> I hate to be so bold, but he'll make comments like, Man, I wish I had sex. I should masturbate. Yeah. But, you know, once again, it's like you have a wife right here. What is that? But of course, I know what's going on. It's that tri it's almost a triangulation with an act. You know, take the act and control you. I know that you were hoping that this would be an isolated case and other people wouldn't be suffering this, but I also want you to know you're not alone. Unfortunately, when I asked a question about this, I had over a hundred replies, all willing to contribute to this video with their own words. That took place in a matter of less than two hours. So yes, this is a big topic. Number one, I'll say the narcissist withholds to control. They withhold in the same way they may become um, overly sexualized. It's, it's, to keep it from you so that then they have something over you. In other words, you're constantly seeking the thing that they won't give you, and therefore you stay trying to continually seek that thing. Even, to, even after it gets boring and you quit seeking it, it's still there because we set patterns in our brain of behavior. And so once they groom us to be in this loop of withholding, where we are in a constant state of wanting or needing, and they are in a constant state of keeping the prize, then that loop becomes part of the way your brain functions within the dynamic of that relationship. And so it becomes very difficult to get out of. Um, 
that's not something that easily changes, although there are a couple comments where it has. So let me just read to you. I'm going to look down and read. I'm just going to go through and read some of these, and I'm going to reply if there's a question asked or if there's something that I feel like um, relates back to what you were talking about. Mine withheld sex for 16 years and then switched to sexually abusive. That's what I mean. Sometimes they can switch, and it's never good. It's not all of a sudden it's a romantic loving love. It is some dynamic of control and power. So started dating, told me he wanted to wait because I was different. Excuses after, not in chronological order. Scared of pregnancy. I needed to be crazier. Still not sure what that means. Can't sleep with women who he respects. If we start, it will get boring eventually. No sex drive. No drive because of drug abuse. He just isn't normal. He didn't want to get attached. This was a legitimate covert narc that she's talking about. She felt like he wasn't at all sexually attracted to her, and it hurt like health. It made her obsess over it, and in her mind, it was constant. It made her try harder, show up in lingerie only to be ignored and then left in a puddle of tears. She says, I, I was a mess in general for the entire four years almost. Watch him hit on other women when she was around. Nothing for her. It was heartbreaking. He made one final lewd comment in front of her, directed at other women, and she snapped. She broke it off and hasn't budged since. Good for you. That is, unfortunately, when we hit that point where enough is enough, it can take a long time to get there. So next person says, I know now that he cheated throughout our entire relationship, but only withheld the sex after our son was born. Why, with his other affairs, did it not impact our physical intimacy, whereas with this one it did? It sounds a lot like the Madonna whore syndrome, where the narcissist sees you as some ideal. So before you have a child, you are their toy and their thing to play with, and you are theirs sexually to use or not use, to cheat on or not cheat on, to, you know, the other women are also pawns in their game. They're not real people to the narcissist. So then once you have a child, it changes the way they see you, the archetype that you fit in their delusional idealizing brain. And suddenly you become a symbol of motherhood, which you are, but, all, but what that symbol can mean to them is that you're untouchable or, and then we start dealing with the mommy issues or whatever that particular narcissist has in relation to that shift in archetype that they're seeing you as. So the next one says, mine didn't, doesn't initiate. And when I do, he usually acts like it's, like it's a chore or a job he has to do. He will text about sex all day long, but rarely puts it into action. When I have to address it in the past, he has um, so many reasons. I wasn't wearing enough lingerie. I ask for it too much. I don't make him feel he's good enough. He watches porn and masturbates daily. He sexts and phone sex with other women all the time. He just doesn't seem to want to have sex with me. He has never said it was, in it was in retaliation for anything. I have always been so confused as to why he seems to not want sex with me. It was great until I got pregnant nine years ago with our daughter and we got married. Again, I think it relates back to the other one where if there was that sudden change, they see the narcissist doesn't see you as a person, they see you as an object. and you are the object which is some idealized form of what you represent to them instead of being a person with different traits in your personality and varying moods and real expression of your own. They see you as a thing that fits into a place in their mind of what you mean to them. It's a form of delusional thinking that when somebody operates from ego alone, it becomes how they see the world. Again, I think it relates back to the change in what you represented to him. Somebody asks, what if I'm the one withholding? I mean, I don't feel anything for him, and I can't lie. And having intimacy, to me, is a lie. While that's an entirely different topic, it is so relevant, and it really provides an excellent contrast and clarity to this. The difference being your choice to withhold or your choice to not engage in sex with a narcissist that you do not feel anything for intimately is coming from a feeling that is created by the relationship itself. It's coming from a truth that what you feel you cannot express as a lie. And it's coming from, it's not coming from a place of wanting to punish another person, to control another person, to manipulate another person, or 
an idealized state where you see them as something that they're not in order to represent something in your head so that you can have a reaction to it like the narcissist does. You're coming from a place of honesty. And I mean, that can happen in healthy relationships as well. But when we're talking about with a narcissist, I think it's, it's honestly a healthy stance. He withheld sex or indeed anything I wanted or needed like affection, conversation, money, truth, his presence, etc. After the honeymoon, we walked into our apartment and there he stated heaps of rules for me to obey. Sex was every 10 days upon demand the way he liked it. I tried to discuss the ridiculousness of this statement, but he diverted by introducing another rule. Sex became exactly as he wanted. Him dictating the terms while I slowly died a little bit every day without any conscious awareness of that fact. Withholding allowed him to control. That's it right there. Power that they gain through sex. People who have empathy, probably the majority of people who have empathy intact. So whether you're an empath or you're simply a person with empathy intact and don't classify yourself as an empath, it doesn't matter. Most of us connect on an intimate level when we have sex with someone. We are, even in casual situations, there may be a friendship bond or a closeness that's created. When we're talking about within a relationship, most of us bond through this experience. And most of us feel trust, vulnerability. We feel safe. We feel, or rather we want to feel safe. We feel the closeness and connection create a bond that isn't shared with other people. And this is not talking about people who have multiple partners on, you know, consensually. I'm talking about within a monogamous relationship. With a narcissist, it isn't like that. They use it to control us. They use it for power. They use it to manipulate. And they use it for their own gain. You can see where the two different experiences of what sex is do not go together. But you can also see where our experience feeds theirs and theirs leaves us empty and alone. With the withholding, it's exactly the same. They leave you feeling your self-worth is gone. They leave you feeling like something's wrong with you, like you're not worthy as a partner, like you don't exist as a woman or a man, depending on your gender. They, they take away the element of trust and bonding that comes from sex and yet create a bonding that comes from the drive and the desire to have that in your life. Most of us enjoy the act of sex physically, but what we're really craving is the connection and the intimacy that's there. With a narcissist, that doesn't exist. So whether it's during sex with, the, with a narcissist or whether it's withholding, it can be used as the same tool by them to gain power over you. This is an interesting twist on withholding. The narcopath I dated kept threatening to withhold sex, but never did. Every time we had sex, and I mean every time, he started yelling, no more sex for you, immediately after sex. And I say that's silly, but really it isn't silly at all. His reason for doing this was he blamed me for his premature ejaculation issues, and he also complained sex was making his penis hurt. It was so tedious. He would also constantly call me a sex addict, even though I never initiated, even once, and he would aggressively initiate constantly. Unsurprisingly, I found it all extremely annoying and unsatisfying. The threat to withhold is the same as the threat to leave, is the threat to anything that they can, it's taking my toys and go. I'm going to take my toys and go. It's a very immature and controlling, manipulative statement to use. It also puts a shadow of doubt inside of you if you're trauma bonded or, or man being manipulated by this person that there is something wrong with you. And it creates back to the same thing I was saying before, where it can create all of those negative self-beliefs. But then what happens is they have sex with you again, and they've just built you back up. They've created the good feeling in you, and then they break it down with the bad feeling because they need that cycle of love bomb devalue. I mean, and love bomb does not have to actually mean giving you gifts. It can mean as simple as giving you the thing that you wanted or the thing that means intimacy or connection, whether you wanted it or not. The giving you something and then taking the something away. Sex is a reward for me, or that's how it seemed. I have, when I have obeyed him, his, been nice again by his standards, allowed him to buy what he wants, be his little puppet and then have sex. He doesn't cuddle me. And I have been told on many occasions not to touch him. By touch, I mean hold his hand or touch him when I sit next to him. 
I get one kiss in the morning before he leaves, followed by some sort of unnecessarily not nice name. The fear of intimacy from the narcissist, whether it be a fear or the fact that they just can't give it, they can't experience intimacy, is so clear when I read something like that. They want the act that gets them off. They don't want the closeness that's created by that act. So they put all these rules in place so that you have no expectations and by stepping into it, there's an agreement, so to speak. There's no real agreement because there is no such thing as consent when you're being manipulated. When I say that, what I mean is in their world, they tell you something and then they state it as a fact and somehow that means you agreed to it. Again, with the control and the power. And another one. Mine never initiates. If I bring up any lack of intimacy, that I'm ruining things and not letting them happen naturally. When I don't say anything, he's telling me I'm horrible and unlovable and that's why nobody would even want me. There are also days when he gets where he wants some. If I decide to give in, it's over before it starts and he blames me for his lack of stamina. He's an alcoholic as well. Honestly, I think it affects his sex drive. Blaming me is his answer. Blaming me is his answer. Never that his habits get in the way of him having a normal physical relationship with a woman. And that's a good point. The blame factor, they can place blame where it isn't appropriate. They can take the blame for something that is going on with themselves, whether it be addiction or physiological function of their bodies, or whether they are cheating and just don't have the stamina because they are unable to have sex multiple times a day. And then place the blame back onto you, the survivor, so that they can justify their actions. And in a sense, that's, you know, it's gaslighting and it's control. I think we're seeing here that the narcissist will use withholding both to shift the blame of something that they're going through and they're experiencing onto you or to assert their power over you or to gain control. <clears throat> the effects that can have on you as a survivor can truly damage your self-esteem and your self-worth, as well as bring up questions for you about your own worth and your beliefs about yourself. So I think it's really important to understand when you've had this happen that none of it was your fault, that this is a pattern. And you can see from literally an hour of asking this question, how many people came forward and uh, gave me permission to tell this piece of their story where this is a commonly used tactic for a narcissist. You can rediscover yourself and your worth through healing and disbelieving the lies that this withholding has taught you. Have you had experience with a narcissist withholding sex? What are your thoughts? What are your comments? Can you think of other reasons that a narcissist would do this? And what, what other effects has it had on you? Leave a comment below or any questions below. Again, my name is Lise Kalichi. I'm a life coach at Queen Being. For information about me, about coaching or group coaching, you can see the comments below. Hit subscribe and see you next time.